Log number seven. Hey everyone, it's Adam. And I'm Jay. What, what the hell <laughs> is on your face? I thought we were talking about FPV today. Oh, FPV, that's right. FPV or first person view. So what is FPV, Jay? FPV is first person viewing. And what that is, is it starts with a camera. This here is just a, uh, a camera that does not record. So all it's gonna do is allow you to see where you're going. Uh, it's a power supply and a filter along with a uh, transmitter receiver here that's going to send out a signal to either your glasses or a monitor. And that's the basics of it. You can also get this camera that has a little SD card. You can put it in and record your flight. Other people just take a GoPro and put it on and do that too. Right. So. Now, a lot of people more recently have probably heard of FPV racing. This is probably one of the fastest growing sports we have a small FPV racer here. This is actually the Immersion RC Vortex 250. Now this is a sweet little machine. It's all compact. It's got a built-in camera, built-in video transmitter, and uh, these are really meant to go out and just go fast and do loops and rolls. Uh, but, but prior to that, like you said, um, we really were just looking at, you, you would have a a video transmitter like this and you would place it on your copter it used to be like the phantom twos or even the right, first yeah, phantoms yep. that first came out. On mine. and you would get a cable to go to whatever camera you had so if you had a gopro you would go uh, to a usb and you take that video out and that allowed you to do first person view or actually give you that feel like you're actually in the cockpit flying around so you, you kind of take your your perception from looking up and figuring out which way is left and right and actually put yourself in that cockpit like you're playing a video game essentially and when you move left on the stick you bank left and you were right in there with it so it gives you a real immersive feel uh, we have a, a bunch of different fpv items here jay's yeah. got a pair of uh, goggles there um, now what makes yours different from let's say this white pair here well they're both fat shark right they're both fat sharks uh these are more the basic model this one here, it's nowhere near as nice. This does not transmit or receive, I should say, in HD. And this one, you're gonna get a little bit more fluttering when you're, when you're watching. So sometimes when you're turning and, and banking around, you may get a flutter in your screen. Sure. Now, a lot of that, a lot of the fluttering too, or the static you see uh, has a lot to do with antennas. Now, all of these goggles and even these monitors, they come with a stick type antenna or a whip antenna, if you wanna call it that. Uh, and they're, they're just basically a straight antenna. And what happens when you're flying FPV is the ground unit, or this, let's say this is the ground unit, and your air unit, when they're vertical and parallel to each other, that signal is great. But once the, the aircraft starts to bank, the, the polarity of those two become out of whack, essentially, and you get a lot of static. So what they started to develop was you see a lot of these, people call them mushroom antennas or spiral net antennas. They, some of them have domes on them. We have a pair here that just has a regular four lobe antenna. Um, and it kind of looks like a cake mixer, so to speak. Right. And what that does is at any time that the antenna is banking, there's always one lobe that's vertical. So it keeps your clarity very sharp. You can go further typically, and you don't have those, those dropouts and that static because no matter if, if the spiral net is on the, on the aircraft or on your goggles, when you're moving your head around, there's always one piece that's vertical and in that same, you know, parallel to the antenna on the aircraft. So would you put one of those on your uh, flyer too then? Yeah, definitely. You would want to put, like we have uh, on the, uh, the racer here, this is a spiral net antenna by Immersion RC, and this has either a three or four lobe uh, same, antenna. Pretty much the same yeah. thing, just covered, right? Exactly like this. They just put them inside of a plastic case. So sometimes you see them like this. Sometimes you see them like that. Now, did you build this one here? No, this one here, what's nice about this, this is probably one of only of a handful of, of racers that are considered almost pro quality, right. but right out of the box. I mean, heavy duty uh, carbon fiber. It's got a flight controller in it. It's got an OSD and an OSD, for those who don't know, is on screen display. So that's gonna give you things like your altitude, your speed, your battery uh, capacity and your battery draw. Um, sometimes horizon. they'll give you your horizon. Um, if you do have a GPS-enabled GPS copter, it would give you maybe a direction back to home, so things like that. 
So an OSD is very important. That way when you're flying along, not only do you have the live image, but you have basically a full instrument panel around the edges of your, of your view so that you can see, okay, I've got five minutes left of flying. I'm, you know, 300 feet away. I'm 40 feet up. Um, some of them have speed and other things. It just depends on the make and model. But yeah, this, this copter here was actually right out of the box. It comes just like this. You just have to add a receiver okay. and a battery and you're good to go. And you can be up and racing. Uh, there are a lot of other ones though. Um, and one of the nice things that I like about the FPV racers is they're small. They're very compact. You know, typically you can throw that in a backpack or a lot of them come with small cases. But, but this one here, what's unique about this is it's a 3D printed copter. I'll let you kind of show that one, Jay. Sure. So, you know, for those of you, you know, 3D printing is, is very popular right now. You can get on to a site like Thingiverse and go out and see a cool design and download basically everything you see that's orange here was 3D printed, spend 50 or 100 bucks on components, and you've got yourself your own 3D racer. I got about uh, probably 120 bucks into this yeah, thing. Yeah, there you with, go. You know, motors, props. Uh, Compared to something that like this, <laughs> right. same size, that runs about $550, right. not including a battery, not including your radio. It's real easy to spend $750 to $1,000 on a, on a pro FPV racer. Well, some of those racers that were racing in Dubai and stuff, oh, yeah. that's entry level for them. They're, exactly. They're, they're really... they, this has some stability built into it, meaning that it'll, it'll try and keep the copter level. It does have a manual mode. Most of those racers are flying totally manual. Flat that's out. why you see them doing the loops and rolls and just going crazy with the, with the controls. Now, what we used to use before we had uh, goggles, and I, we'll talk a little bit more about some specifics on the goggles, was just an FPV monitor. So this particular monitor here is very popular. It's been used for the last probably three or four years, made by FlySight. Uh, this is what they call a diversity monitor. So what this monitor does is not only does it look for uh, that signal coming from the copter or the aircraft, but it's also looking for the best signal. So it eliminates that dropout that you might right. get when you, when you are flying around. And what we do typically with ours is we put two different styles of antenna on there that way for close, we have the spiral net style, the mushroom style for up above us. It's covering us if we're flying around and banking. But then we also put a directional on and this allows us to really focus that signal way out. So if we're doing some long range flying right. and the monitor actually monitors the best signal and automatically switches between the two signals. Well, too, don't we want to stay in line of sight for Exactly. So we see that term a lot too, LOS or line of sight. Um, you know, whether you're following the FAA rules or just following safe practices, you don't want to get too far away from your aircraft. A lot of things can happen. You know, your goggles could die. Your battery might die for no reason. And all of a sudden you got a blank screen, you, you take the goggles off and the aircraft's too far away. What are you going to do? So um, it's real important that we do maintain line of sight, meaning that we can physically see that copter, that aircraft, uh, when, we're, when we're out there flying with or without the goggles on. Right. Uh, because even, I think that's still a gray area with the AMA and the, and the, and the FA as far as our, our FPV goggles legal to even use. I mean, for with commercial spotter, operators. With a spotter. Yeah. They, 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 yeah. they, they would like you to have, if Adam was flying with the goggles, right. me standing there saying, hey, you're getting too close to the tree, right. there's people there. Because he might not be able to see that with the goggles on. Right. So. Now there are some manufacturers that are doing some really cool things with that. Yes, they, and we got a chance. Right. There's there's two manufacturers. One, FlySight. Um, they make a pair of goggles that actually, when you put them on, of course your eyes are covered, but they have a camera right in the middle, and that allows you to quickly switch between uh, looking at the view the camera is seeing. I believe you can even do a picture in a picture. You can, correct. So yes. you can actually physically see outside of the goggles, but also see what the cameras are seeing. And then we also have a pair of goggles or glasses, I should say, from Epson here. Now what's unique about these is they are essentially a pair of clear glasses, but they actually project the images on little pieces of glass inside of the glasses. So when you put these on, you're looking through a clear pair of glasses. I can see my aircraft, but at the same time, I have a little, it almost looks like I'm looking at a 40 inch plasma it screen does, here. Right? Um, and so that's a, a really neat concept. Now it is a little tricky to see if you're looking up at bright sun, um, because obviously you're trying to see through the glasses, see your aircraft, and also see a, a picture that's being displayed in here. But it, I think we have some really neat potential with this. It's kind of like almost like Apache 
gunship kind of Correct. technology Heads here. Heads up display, right? Yeah, yeah, because you're looking through at your target, but at the same time you can see visually what your camera or in the case of like an Inspire or something like that, you could actually frame up your shot with something like these. And we had a chance to go out today and we actually are doing a review on this and we went out and tried them out today and I was pretty impressed and you can see that on another video when we actually do the review on them. But um, yeah, there it, it's a technology that's gonna be here to stay and it is an alternative to the ones that are just blacked out. Right. One thing I will say for those of you that are out there looking for a good pair of goggles, there's one thing that you don't see a lot about on the forums when you're shopping for those, and it's something called IPD, and that's the inner pupil distance. So it's basically when you go get uh, an eye exam and they take a measurement from pupil to pupil in centimeters, or actually it's millimeters. Yes, millimeters, millimeters right. Um, you need to know that distance because some of these glasses, they may go from like 60 to 69 or 65. It's a very small uh, distance. Now, I'm not sure, on the on the ones you have, yours are fixed. These are fixed, um, yes, these do not. Move. On the HD models, you have little levers down here that actually allow you to widen or narrow up the two screens because if you have them too wide or too narrow, it's gonna almost seem like you have blinders on. So you wanna get those two boxes so it seems like one square. So one because thing, you have that issue with your eyes, don't yours are yeah. naturally a little bit wider than yeah. the... exactly. I got a huge head, <laughs> you know, big head. So yeah, my my eyes are I think like seventy three or something. And normal like that. is like sixty eight. No, no, I mean well, that's yeah, I'm not I mean, sure just, what normal yeah, is. And, okay. and one thing, you know, uh, I'm not sure, you know, if it's it's where they're designed or what, but you want to make sure to look at that, and you'll find that down in the spec sheet. You'll see like you know the the color and the image size, and somewhere in there you'll see. IPD or PID, uh, and you'll see that measurement in there. Uh, another thing for glasses wearers, if you wear contacts yeah, or glasses tough. like we do, it's kind of hard to put these over glasses. So you have a couple options. A, you can get um, what they call the Diopler uh, uh, adjustments or the little uh, pieces that slide in to actually correct for near or far sighted vision, or you can just simply go with a monitor. This is the old fashioned way. And typically when we are flying with these, this kind of solves two two problems. One, you have this on a tripod next to you up at eye level. I'm maintaining line of sight, but I can quickly glance down and frame my shot. And I don't have to worry about wearing glasses, whether Correct. they're sunglasses or eyeglasses or whatever. So that's also an option for those who wear glasses or maybe they can't find a pair of goggles that actually fit their face. And these are these screens are also good if you have somebody that's with you that wants right. to see because when you have these on, you're the only one that can see. At least right. with this, people you can, can share a screen. Right? Yeah, right. people can see what you're looking at, and they're like, "Whoa, we actually <laughs> on our international drone day, we had a, a, a FPV flyer out there, and we had some people." put on the goggles and we actually had to have them sit down because they're like, whoa, whoa, he yeah, was doing flips and rolls. And you'll tend to want to, uh, <laughs> to, to, to feel like you're on a roller coaster. So if you're new to it, definitely recommend you sit in a chair. That's why you see a lot of racers they do, sitting right? down because you need to focus on what's going on and not worry about if you're going to tip over or not. There are also some different other brands of... There are. I don't know if there's someone, well, goggles. <coughs> Excuse me is the Zeiss, right? Zeiss would be. is a pair of goggles. They're actually, I would call them glasses. They like right. to be called glasses. Right. There are some larger style, like the head play. Right. Uh, Oculus Rift is obviously a popular one. Um, there's a new one. Uh, the they, Isn't that the, uh, um, I think a line just came out with one. Yep. And what it is, it looks just like a big foam tube that you're putting right. on and you slide your- You put your smartphone in there, right? Right, yeah. And so again, it makes it look like it's a 60 inch screen that you're looking at. But again, line of sight yep. is gone because you're looking through this. And that is actually more comfortable because it, it fits around your whole right. face. Like it's almost like putting on a diving mat. It covers man. the cracks of the sun right, getting in. Right, right. But they come out about this far too. Yeah, so. it can be a little cumbersome. But <laughs> yeah. there are some, there's plenty of options out there. So if you're into looking at FPV goggles, definitely do your homework. Check out yes. all the models. Maybe if you can get to a hobby shop, try a few pairs on and, and, and consider that eye distance. It the makes a distance. big difference because some of these are not comfortable to wear. Uh, for some people, other people are like, oh yeah, they're fine, but you have to make right. sure that they're comfortable for your face before you spend 200 or yeah, five, four six, or five hundred dollars on goggles. Right. One other thing we didn't touch on a lot, but most of the FPV transmitters, at least in the US, are now on 5.8 gigahertz. They right. used to That's do 2.4 a lot, but right. of course when 2.4 radios came out, you can't have both on the same aircraft. 
So you'll see a lot, uh, most of the FPV gear now is 5.8. There's a little bit of 1.2, 1.3. Why is it 5.8? Why not 2.4? Well, well, you just missed that because I just said. Oh, there you yeah, go. Yeah, because of radios. You, you, you don't want to have an aircraft that's being controlled, let's say like this, has a Futaba radio that's on 2.4 and then have a 2.4 transmitter on there that, because that would conflict. You could have dropouts both on your video and control issues. So we spread those spectrums out. So you have 2.4 on the radio, 5.8 on the video, and in some cases, if you're flying UAVs and things like that, you might have 900 megahertz on the telemetry. So everything is kind of spread out. But 5.8 is, is kind of gives you the most bang for the buck. Right. Um, and you want to check with your local uh, and state uh, regulations because some of these devices, especially if you're buying them overseas, they're not actually legal in the U.S. when it comes to FCC rules. You want to read the small print. The watts on them. Right. I believe it's 250 in the U.S. Correct. Anything yeah. over 250, I believe you're supposed to have a ham radio um, yeah, license. Yeah, amateur radio license, license which isn't that hard to get if right. you do want to do that. But just know that when you're buying some of that stuff overseas, you want to make sure that it's legal where you are because you could get in some trouble with the FCC if you were you know, broadcasting something that was interfering with a license station or something like that. Right. Yep. So that's kind of a brief overview, guys. We'd love to get out and get some FPV flying and some racing in and kind of show you what these look like in the goggles. And we'll have some video spread throughout this video. Um, but for today, I think we've covered the basics to kind of get you interested. You got anything else to share, Ed? I do not. So what did we learn today? Line of sight. Line we want to always see that we can see what we're flying and where we're flying. Line of sight, OSD, FPV. We'll put all those definitions on the screen. And for now, I think we're over and out. And that's a wrap. And that's a wrap.